All right, part three, I'm back. We are gonna pull everything apart. I've looked at the gear mesh. I've had other people look at the gear mesh. They say it's good, I think it's good. I don't care, I don't wanna mess with it ever again. We're pulling it apart for the last time. So now, everything's coming apart. We're gonna go ahead, we're going to press on with the shims in there. We're gonna press on the pinion bearings because before, remember, we were just slipping those over. So now we're gonna press on the actual final ready to install pinion bearings. I'm gonna show you guys the crush sleeve eliminator kit. If you didn't have this, you would be using a crush collar, but I'm gonna show you the crush sleeve eliminator kit, show you how to set up your pinion bearing preload. Um, for these vehicles, for the GM 12 volt, it's 13 to 15 inch pounds. It's a little different if you've got a 12 volt carrier end, but we're gonna set it up for this. I'm gonna show you putting the carrier in. I'm gonna show you some of the cool upgrades that I got, including the carrier bearing stud kit. I'm gonna show you the rear end girdle. All that good stuff. I got the drive shaft ordered. It's coming on Tuesday, so probably won't see that in this video. That'll be the next video, but I've got a custom drive shaft. It's shortened for this. It's got 1350 series U-joints in the rear. I also went ahead and got 1350 series U-joints in the front, which is, I'm being told, a little bit different because the T56 slip yoke generally either has a 1310 series or a 3R both of which are smaller than the 1350. So this is gonna be a fully custom drive shaft, three and a half inch aluminum, should save some weight, um, should be much stronger. I've messed with my exhaust hangers a little bit to make sure there's clearance, so. Just like always, step one, make sure your parts are clean. You're gonna to wanna to make sure when you're taking measurements that you're getting repeatable, accurate measurements. And once you put oil in this thing, there's no turning back. You don't want that oil to get dirty or contaminated. So take your time, get a nice clean work surface, get some shop towels, get some brake clean, and clean it all off. I don't show it, but at this point, you should have pressed on your brand new bearing. The bearing you see is not the one that I ground down. A good starting point for your crush sleeve eliminator is to measure the size of your old crush collar and then add a couple thousands. That's where I started. One more thing to note, there's different styles of nuts. The nut that I wound up using for mock-up is different than the one I use for final assembly. That's just because this one threads on easier. So I wanna to talk to you about what a crush sleeve eliminator, eliminator is. So here's the old crush sleeve. Basically, how this works is as you apply torque to the top nut, you take this bearing and you're pushing it downwards. Now, it's more than just a regular, you know, it doesn't slide on, so it's a slight interference fit. As this goes down, it, you know, when you install it, it comes down to where it almost contacts this. So when you have a crush sleeve, you actually take the sleeve and you squish it, for lack of a better word, um, you yield the, the metal to the point where it's not going to return back to its original size. And in doing so, you set the preload in between the bearings. Now, supposedly, um, that's a huge pain in the butt, and I believe it because you got to put three to 400 foot-pounds on the nut right here, which is a ton, especially if you're working on your back underneath the car and you can't get the leverage and stuff like that. So they make these kits here. Um, they come with various shims. And the shims allow you to supposedly um, come down and get the perfect amount of preload. So it's a little bit counterintuitive actually. Um, more shims equals uh, less preload and less shims equals more preload. If the shims weren't there at all, you would just keep tightening that, you know, keep pressing on this harder and harder and harder until eventually you couldn't turn the pinion anymore, and if you kept going, you damaged the bearing. So these shims allow you to set that perfect amount of preload. Then you come back with an inch-pound torque wrench, like this style right here, and you put it on there and you turn it, and then that shows you what your preload is. Um, now, the problem is, this only comes with, like I said, five shims, and it is super critical that you get the shims right, and I've tried it six ways till Saturday, and I can't seem to get it. I, you know, add a couple thousandths with what I have, and I've got absolutely no preload. I don't add enough, and then I have too much preload. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. I actually spoke with the manufacturer who sold me this, or Quick Performance, and they said, you know what? We get it close with the shims, and then we use this nut that they supply, which we'll talk about in a second. It's a little bit special. Um, use this nut here, and they just tighten it up um, until they get the preload they desire and they stop. 
Um, initially, I thought that you're supposed to torque this nut to 150 foot-pounds, but that's actually not the case. I'll say one more thing here. Um, a couple of you guys might say in the comments, well, well, wait a second. You know, I thought normally you put 300, 400 foot-pounds on these things to tighten up the crush collar. Now you're telling me you only need to put 40 or 50? Okay, these nuts are special right off the bat. See this dimple right here? And I talked about this in the other video. They actually come and using a press, they dimple this and it takes the threads on the inside. And it's really hard to see, but it actually deforms the threads a little bit to the point where I almost thought I had the wrong thread size because this thing is a pain in the ass to get started. And you get it on there a couple threads and I can't turn it by hand. I put this thing in a vise, you really need an impact. What I'm telling you is when you use this nut, okay, instead of the other style nut that I had, here's a nut that I was using that came off it before. This is just like a nylock nut, right? Uh, inch and a quarter nylock nuts a little bit larger i actually don't like the inch and a quarter because it gives you like no room in here to get your larger socket and i had to clearance it so um this is the other style threads on nicer but this one you probably really do need more torque because you're relying on the thread locker and that and that nylock insert okay with this one the threads are deformed somewhat to the point where when you start tightening this thing up, I mean, geez, you, you really, it, it doesn't damage the threads, I promise you. You can take it on and off, but it is a different type of fit, okay? So between that deformed thread when it gets drawn up there and the red Loctite, I was assured this thing, it won't come apart. So um, we'll see. Maybe it'll explode and I'll die. I hope not. But that's my little tech tip. Uh, I just want to follow up with that one last item about the, about the nut. Finally got the pinion preload bearing preload set um, it's sitting there when I'm using my inch pound wrench here which as you can see frustratingly doesn't zero out completely so in one direction going this way it's like 15 17 and a half this way it's about 19 so it's somewhere around the 17 to 19 range um, they call for 13 to 15 inch pounds Speaking with quick performance, they said 20. So I think I'm like right there in the ballpark. Um, the next step is to install the carrier again, hopefully for the final time. I've got my shims here marked. Obviously it matters which side they go on um, because you need to have the correct uh, backlash. So install these. Um, it's always a good idea, I think, to mark them ahead of time so you know, and that way in case these all fall out, they go on the ground, um, you get them mixed up, you can go back. So I'm gonna actually check this measurement one more time and make sure, because I did this before I pulled everything apart, but again, I marked everything, I marked the caps. Um, I'm actually going to ditch these. Um, instead of using bolts, I've actually got a pretty cool trick set over here of studs so i'm going to go with these these studs um this part's machine you got fine thread on one side coarse on the other i think that will give me a more exact uh bearing cap preload and then obviously i've got the ta cover which then puts even more preload on the caps themselves just to keep them from coming out because as you put force on the ring gear it actually forces the caps outward which is a common or i guess a potential mode of failure so um yeah you'll have a little adjustment nut it'll come down and push right here and you'll need a couple foot pounds for that so uh, let's go ahead and get the rest of it all together okay so remember i've set my i've got my pinion installed i've got the yoke in everything i pressed the shim on now it's kind of time to come back and and you want to recheck your backlash um just in case. So before I had it at eight thousandths, I've already taken one measurement, and the first measurement I took was about nine thousandths, which is within spec. So I've rotated the ring gear. I'm gonna try it again. Let's see. Seven thousandths right there. Repeats. Excellent. So I've checked it in two spots. I'm happy. It averages out to eight thousandths. I would check it in more places if I was doing the initial setup, but since um, I've already set it up and this is just kind of like a recheck. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. So I've got my TA part number 1815 bearing stud kit to replace the old bearing, uh, bearing cap bolts. I noticed some of them, this one, the threads are pretty good, but at least one of them, the threads are a little buggered. Um, anyways, I think this is a better, 
better design. So basically it's got an Allen right here. So you thread them in and then use an Allen wrench to tighten them. You just put them to like 10, 10 foot pounds, I believe, not very much. And then you come back, put your caps on. You wanna make sure obviously that you mark the caps like I have, I think I've told you like 45 times, but yeah, driver's side top. You'd slide those over and then they come with washers and nuts, just a little bit better design. So throw those on now. Okay, so the True Track uses a little bit different assembly. So the other one, if you remember, so I've already got, well, let, me, let me start. I've already got the C-clips in. So remember you take the axles, push them in, pull the C-clip out, the reverse is the same for installation. You push them all the way in until the axles touch in the center, slide your C-clip in and then I usually like put a finger right here as I rotate the axle with one hand and just pull it outwards. Now they're out, so the C-clips can't go anywhere. So the Eaton True Track is a little bit different type of design. There's this spacer that goes in, I guess like so, in between. So right now you can see you couldn't push the axles inwards because they would hit this. And it's basically centered on the inside then you have this piece right here, which then goes over top. Again, this is my first time doing this, so um, I think that's right. I guess there's that little location hole to let you know that you did it right. And then there's a snap ring. Jeez, I'm terrible with the camera. So once you get this in, then there's a snap ring. You need a set of snap ring pliers to get that to go inside of there. So. And you're pretty much done. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna put that in next. So the instructions call to install it uh, finger tight and then let the gasket material set up for an hour before final torquing. So what you saw earlier was me just using an inch pound torque wrench just to get it even. I just did like, you know, three inch pounds, something, or sorry, I don't know, a one foot pound or two foot pound, something really light um, just to get it even. And then I always like to come around and do two passes. So I just did, 15 foot-pounds, the final's 25. Um, you wanna make sure that you back out these all the way so they're not touching anything. So I've got it set to 25. I'll come back and do the, do the final torque. Man, that's always scary. Okay, the next step here is to come in until these touch. They should touch on the main caps. And then you just go a couple, just a couple uh, foot pounds on those. I think they call out five. So you're gonna need to get yourself a inch pound torque wrench like what I have. Remember inch pounds times, let's see, foot pounds divided by 12 is inch pounds. Yeah. So they call for no more than five. I think I'm gonna go to four, just to take into account any weird stuff. So just take your time. Wow, that's nothing. Okay, now let's, let's just see here for, okay, so I count three threads, I count three threads. Let's back this off a little bit. Check it one more time. 20 foot pounds. Okay, let's try this one. Double check. Okay. Well, that's it for part three. Hopefully you guys learned as much as I did through this whole process. In the next video, I'm gonna throw my brand new drive shaft in take it out for a drive and see what it's like. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and don't forget to subscribe.